So now recall that we had some approximations for angle modulated signals, and that was the, the narrow band approximation. This was the, the, the first approximation that we made when we were trying to analyze our angle modulated signals. Recall we were trying to determine how much bandwidth does an angle modulated signal actually have, and, and we used a, a various methods to determine what that might look like. And the first one was the narrow band approximation. So I'll, I'll place a link to those videos as well here uh, on, on how to find that narrow band approximation. So first, the FM, the frequency modulated signal, we had to assume that our constant, right, KF multiplied by AT, was much, much less than 1. This was our narrow band approximation. So recall AT as well is based off the message, is the integral of the message. So to have a narrow band FM signal, we said that this should be much smaller than 1. In practice, this is a little bit hard to do. Many real signals are not actually like this. But we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll return to this idea because it'll help us out and see how we can uh, do this first modulation. And then additionally, um, when we do that, when we make this narrow band FM approximation, we see that the narrow band FM signal can be approximated like this. One, the first part of this has a cosine term, and then the second part is another sinusoidal term uh, that's being modulated by the the message or a version of the message right the integral of the message so this is our narrow band fm approximation likewise we had the phase modulation uh, narrow band approximation and in, in the phase modulation we also assume that our constant multiplied the, by the message was quite small and it takes a similar form right so we had a, a cosine term and then a sinusoidal term that's being modulated directly by the message Okay, so the, this was the, the two different narrow band angle approximations. Now the reason that we are interested in those, the, they take this form, is, is that it looks quite similar to the amplitude modulation that we uh, earlier discussed. So the amplitude modulated wave looked like this. And we can see that our narrow band approximations, right? these look very similar in form. They have some amplitude, uh, two, two sinusoidal terms, and the second of these, right, we had the first term, which is the carrier only, and then the second term is, is based on the message. And we see that for both the uh, AM wave and, and the angle modulated waves. So because of this similar similarity, right, the question we should ask ourselves is, could we use a DSB SC modulator, right? We had a variety of these. We looked at a variety of devices, um, right, the, on how to do AM modulation. So could we do a narrow band modulation uh, for angle modulation using these? And the answer is yeah, that, this is a very good starting point for us. So how would this look? Right, this is our DSBSC modulator. We had a message go in one input. We had a cosine wave of a carrier free frequency go into another input. And when you uh, out pops a message being multiplied by the carrier wave and your modulator might have some additional gain constant, right? This may uh, increase or reduce the gain. So if we were to use this for phase modulation, right, we would first we would have this part, which would be quite similar, right? A message and then a, a sinusoidal wave this time that goes in at the input and what would come here at the output, so this should say sign, I believe. And uh, the other place, right, uh, we would also have a cosine wave come here and we would sum them together. So we, we would sum them together to get this narrow band phase modulated output. So this would make this modulation uh, our, using our classic DSBSC method. And then we would sum in a secondary component, right? The carrier only component. We would sum that in and we'd get the narrow band approximation. So the uh, frequency modulation method would be pretty similar, although we know, right, for FM, this should be uh, the integral of the message. So all we would need to do is add an integrator here. Again, this should be sine. And we would get this uh, first, the first part, using our DSB SC modulator, we would get a sine wave that has been modulated by a version of the message. And then we would sum it together with a carrier only component. And this would give us a narrow band FM approximation. So using a DSB SC modulator and a phase shifter, right, we could, we could generate some waves, narrow band FM or PM waves, that are approximations 
of our uh, FM or PM signal that's at our carrier frequency. So whatever uh, the carrier frequency is for FM or uh, AM. Okay, so what, what are the downsides to this? Uh, th this method might result in some amplitude variation. Uh, this is not always a good thing, uh, but it can be uh, uh, fixed. Uh, the generated signal is also just an approximation of the narrowband FM or PM signal because we know, right, this, this is not truly going to contain all of the FM or PM information because this was just a, an approximation. And that was what was in, we discussed in those uh, previous uh, sections, section videos. Uh, you may need to use some additional devices to limit that amplitude variation uh, or to remove the distortion. And I'll place a link below, but there are, there's various ways to do this. It's a little beyond our scope, but amplitude limiters uh, are similar to something like uh, automatic gain control, but they don't require feedback. So this is uh, the, another type of device that you'd use in conjunction to uh, limit this amplitude variation, which would result in a little bit less distortion.